Hey there, Segudo Golfers, Tom Segudo here, and you can bet you guessed it, we're doing a course vlog today, and I'm walking around with my bag of clubs, heading to the first hole. It's a really exciting, beautiful, sunny day in Litchfield, South Carolina, at Litchfield Country Club, the good old teaching stomping grounds where you see me yelling and chucking my clubs all day long. Well, almost the first tee, didn't do any warm-up because I'm just out here to have some fun, and usually I do do a warm-up, but since I'm having fun, I'm just gonna get up here and whack the crap out of the ball and send it to the target. So, let's get started. Got a little thunderstorm out there in the distance, but it's not gonna be a big problem. We're only swinging metal sticks around our body in an open field. But um, we're gonna get as much golf as we can in today. First hole here is a lovely hole with some brilliant acting. And it's a par four, goes around the bend, like 370 yards or something like that. I've got a tree iron and what I like to do is play a little Laura Davies style golf, set it up off of a little mashy niblick lie, and we get started. And why do I do this? One, it's cool, but it feels so good when you mash it. I want to go down the middle of the fairway, obviously. Hit a good old tree iron off of that mashy niblick lie right here. Oh, that felt good. That's going to be position A, A number one. And you don't have to pick up your tee because you Laura Davies it off the grass. So I really nuked that three iron for the first hole. Not bad for just coming out cold. Like I said, probably something to do with walking into this thunderstorm. But what you got to do, and it really feels good if you can ever get it up on a mashy niblick lie like that, just put a little hole in the ground, hit off of it like the good old days. It feels like buttery, crispy impact, like two times better than the cleanest shot you've ever hit because it's sitting up on the grass. And yeah, that's all I got to really say about that. As far as my play style on the golf course, I usually hit a draw. And so what I did is aim down the middle of the fairway, try and start the ball a little bit to the right, have it curve back to the target, and in this case, I hit it at the 150 stake in the middle, which is out here somewhere. And uh, yeah, that felt really good. We got about 115 to the hole, so I'm gonna pull out a gap wedge, choke down a little bit. And I don't want it to go too long, so this is a perfect club carry the bunker. Little tin. All right, it's hole high. We can pretty much chip that. First course vlog, carrying a bunch of stuff around, walking with the old man. He's helping me with the launch monitor stuff. So first gig, first rodeo doing this. Wish y'all could be here and we could just talk in person. That'd be cool. But we're doing the best we can. That's my old man. He is a stack and tilt pro. Now he was one of the shifter and lifters, and then I came up to him one day and told him, hey, I'm doing stack and tilt. And he said, what? What are you doing stack and tilt? Or his head turned all red. And I said, it's okay. I just wanted to tell you. It was kind of like, it was like, it was like one of those moments where you, I don't know, I can imagine it's like that whole 16 and pregnant show. That's like the dad's reaction. What do you mean? Well, it was the same thing. Like I'm switching to stack and tilt. So, uh, yeah, well, I got him to do it anyway, and he started playing better golf again, and so we stopped having that argument. But for a while there, we were both the anti-stackers. I know that sounds like, <laughs> sounds brutal. Anti-stackers, what are you talking about? Well, we were, because that's what everybody told us to do. All right, I got a, I got a lovely little uh, uh, putt, because in South Carolina, the grass is thick, and I love to do this shot. Pull out a hybrid, and it works just like a putter. Chipping off of this fringe stuff is so bushy, unpredictable, 
But if you use a hybrid, it acts just like a putt, as if I didn't even have a wedge. I don't know what the speed's like today, so this could be terrible, but we're gonna try. Oh, oh, that could be really good. Oh, well, that's not too bad. We'll take it. We'll take it. Not a bad first effort. Um, I guess no warm up works sometimes. But we saw the thunderstorm coming in and I was like, okay, forget the warm up. Let's tap this putt in, move on with our life. A little pre shot routine. Don't think too much about it. Just knock it straight in the hole. Here's a par. Club face points at the hole. Make your par. Move on with your life. Sweet, we got out of there with a nice par. Love it. Now there's some thunder in the background. We might not be out here too long, folks, but my goal is that we can have a fun little course vlog. Got a par five coming up next. And um, it's, a, it's a 90 degree to the right. Big dog leg right. They say 225 to the hazard if you go straight. And I have hit it, bombed it straight. I don't usually cut the ball. You guys don't watch YouTube videos to see a wussy play layup ball. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna hit the driver. That's what we're gonna do. Is that smart? No, but it's fun. And you could potentially get on the green and get ready to hit an eagle. So here we go. Like I said, 90 degrees to the right. We might get a solid three holes in today, but I'm teeing up on the left side of the box so I can try and cut this corner as much as humanly possible because it's fun. So we tighten our chin strap up a little bit. Uh, make a good practice swing. I'm going at this box out there in the distance that's down like the middle right of the fairway. And I just want to hit a straight ball, if anything. Try to cut it, hold off a little bit. Oh, I drew it. That's the Phil Mickelson right there. Too much sauce. We're going to have some fun playing that one. Sounds like it's going to be a three hole day, y'all. We got some thunder rolling in. May have rushed myself on that swing. A little jacked up, but a little bit thinking about trying to get this, uh, this vlogging as much as I can before the tornado comes through, or the hurricane comes through. There will be more of these vlogs coming. But, uh, you know, swing felt good. I just felt like I rushed it too much. I was too excited about trying to cut the corner, play some hero golf. Most of you want to play hero golf. You don't pay 50 bucks a round or whatever it is to go lay up all day. Y'all watch Tiger Woods and you watch hero shots for a living. Yes, don't get me wrong. If you're playing to score, play smart, but don't be afraid to throw in the occasional hero shot because life's too short. And if you have, if you're not planning on being on tour anytime soon, why waste a good opportunity to hit the shot of your life? <sighs> don't ever waste that opportunity. If you're in a position that you've never been before, go for it, send it. So we're walking up the fairway, there's the thunderstorm. And I think my ball is on the left side here. I, I hooked it. Kind of like that shot I hit the building with at the range. Yep. But we're still alive. We're letting this guy play through and he just hit the classic shot right into the woods on the right. And it was like the push fade that everybody hits. I bet he chopped. I think he did, I couldn't see him. Here he comes, he's coming up the fairway right now. He has no idea. But he's okay. It's just that he hit that classic push. We'll let him go by. Yeah. He did the classic, hit it over here, but I'm gonna drop it right in the middle play. Let's see. Oh no, not a bad swing. That's pretty good. He maybe just hit a, you know, had a breakdown. It's only the second hole. Let's see what he does. Yeah, it's a good swing. He's gonna. This guy's gonna go far. I like it. He's like a junior, I think. But he was over there, like seriously over there. You know what that means? 
if you're playing with anybody, if you're playing with anybody, you've got to watch them like a hawk because you could end up being that guy losing money to somebody who hit it 50 yards right and put it in the middle of the fairway. Keep your eyes open for the day walkers. Like I said, Segudo golfers, I did a little bit of a hazard there. Hit it too far, playing the hero shop, it was fun. And, um, well, we can still make par. Gee, I'm still gonna send it, though. So I got a seven iron, nice fluffy lie, probably get it down there about like 185. And then see what happens. Going for the middle of the fairway. Wind at my back. I'll sitting up on a little bit of a dirt mound. I hit a little, little tin again, but it's not gonna hurt. I was thinking about that fluffy dirt mound and not much cushion there. You have a really good chance of chunking it. So if I err on the thin side, I'm okay. But if you're on the chunk side, it's like fatter than your normal fat because it's sitting on a hill of dirt. So we're good. You can get on the green, make par. No big deal. So I'm, about the, I'm at the 150 stake. This is a big green, really big green. It's a lot of opportunity for a huge putt. We're just gonna knock it close, knock in the putt like the last hole. Golf's pretty straightforward game. Hit the ball, find it, hit it again. Send it. Am I hitting it with the wrath of God today? Yes. But I'm not gonna swing out of my shoes to it like I'm doing it in a respectable manner. Because every pro hits it with the wrath of God. They just don't necessarily show it like that whole effortless look it comes from using the speed by keeping the tension light you still accelerate into impact something you should always make sure you do on any shot is accelerate because if you don't well you're going to decelerate and then usually you get that early extension flip chunk behind it fun 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 so here we are coming up to our shot and it's dead on 149. Some thunder. 149. All right, here we go. A couple practice swings behind the ball. Always behind the ball because I like to separate in my mind practice versus play. Going right at the flag, we're going to stick it dead, make the putt, move on with our life. Wind's at my back. Here we go. Oh, it's right on it, Johnny. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Let's make the putt. Let's make the putt. Who cares if you thin it a little bit? We're gonna make the putt. We're gonna make the par. Yeah. You never know about the next shot. One shot at a time. You're never out of the hole. You watch me hook a drive Mickelson style into the woods, winged foot. Oh no. And then I hit a nice little thin seven iron off of a really fluffy lie, so that was okay. And then I just hit a slightly thin nine there, choked down a little bit. Winds at my back. And then we're looking at like five or six feet for par. So that was a smart play. See, what you don't want to do is compound mistakes. Like I hooked that ball left. The next mistake I could have made is said, I'm going to tee it up off of that fluffy ball and bring up my three wood and go for the green. No, sir. No. Don't make two stupid mistakes in one hole. That's why people make doubles, triples, and snowmen. No, you got to you gotta pick up that, those mistakes with a little bit of... Uh, you know, some, some form of reassurance or else the insurance company's never going to, never going to put you on as a client. They'll turn you down right away. So I'll come up the putt. Can't wait to show you. It's really good. I'm just going to turn the camera around just for a little second. You'll see the beautiful little ball mark. Ooh, check that out. Right there. Just sat right next to the ball mark. How about that? So we'll take it. It's a good day. It's a good day. Fix the ball mark. Always fix your ball marks 
It's the equivalent of being a musician and saying, make sure you tip your bartenders. Make sure you take care of the superintendent. They'll love you for that, and then they'll make the course nicer for you. You won't get that situation where um, you get superintendent's revenge, and then they just get mad at you and you never play golf again. Okay, what do we got here? Well, we got a putt for par, and it breaks just a little bit to the right. Just a little, but I don't want to give the hole away. It's fairly straight. So I'm going to pretty much keep this putter on the middle of the hole. Oh, more thunder. Can't wait. Here we go. Point the club face at the hole. Make your par. Move on with your life. That's what I call a good par. All right, so me and the old man coming up on the third hole here. And this is the toughest hole on the course. It's really narrow. Um, it's the number one handicap hole, I think. And it's a bear, even from the back tees. It's not your, not your typical par four. Narrowed up, you gotta send it with a drive. Even from the, even from the white, tr white, white tees, and even the senior tees, it's not really fair for you guys because it's still like four something. Most people will hit driver, three wood into the screen, even for a par four. Beats you up pretty good. Uh, my goal, bust it down there and have a seven iron in. Uh, that's typical from the back tees here. It's like four, I don't know, it says 425, so 430. And we're at sea level, which means it plays like 450 for most people. Uh, that's the one thing they don't talk about in Myrtle Beach is the whole sea level factor. Whenever you come here to play golf, it kills your ego. First time I moved here uh, and played, I thought I had my swing was so screwed up. In reality, I was just at sea level. I was used to playing uh, like, I don't know, Pennsylvania is a little bit more than sea level because the ocean's clearly not there. Like I said, I want to hit it straight down the middle, send it with the wrath of God, and I hit that draw shot. So I want to start it right up the 150 mark. And let's just see what happens. This practice swing. Make sure I keep my relationship with the ball here. Hello, ball. Oh, shoot. That's push draw, but a little too much push. All right, it's in the sand. We'll take it. Not the best driving day. Okay, hit a little bit too much of a push there. Um, haven't hit the driver in a while. I've been doing all these, you know, tips with y'all with the six iron. Maybe I need to do some more driver tips because of this. Don't get a chance to practice a lot. I'm more interested in helping you play your best golf. So do the best you can with what you have. But it was still like 280. Just pushed a little bit. Be okay. It's gonna be okay. I'm gonna go up to that bunker. Say hello to the sand. Myrtle Beach has got some great beaches, by the way. Um, and then we're gonna hit a beautiful shot out of there, make the putt, move on with our life again. Approaching the drop zone. And yeah, my ball's splashing the bunker. Good thing it's splashing the bunker because there's some water just behind it. Um, we've got about a solid 180 here. Tiger Woods style bunker shot, except it's gonna be a six iron and not a eight iron. But what we gotta do at a fairway bunker, make sure that we don't hit behind it. That's death. If you hit behind a fairway bunker, what we gotta do instead is hit ball first no matter what. This is the one shot where it's okay to hit a little thin. What I do is I stand a little bit taller in the bunker because if I sit down or do any digging, it lowers me into the ball and increases the chance that I hit behind it. So I don't want to do any of that. I'm gonna stand tall and give it the best shot I got. So we're going at the middle of the green, stand tall. So notice how I'm tall, I'm not digging. A little too thin, but it might be okay. 
Eh, we might be okay, might have a chip. A little too tall, not bad. Actually, it was a little scary. It was a little too low. Oh shoot, we're too low. It's like that coming into the runway a little too low. I think it's a terrain warning. Terrain, terrain, pull up, pull up. So, <laughs> here we are. See the thunderstorm behind me? You see beautiful sky right here. We, uh, I hit it right just, just over that tree. It was a little too low. We're going to good position for a chip shot. And yeah, gonna do exactly that. I got my gap wedge out. It's an uphill chip. I don't want to get too much air on it. I actually want it to roll more. Just try and keep your chips on the ground instead of trying to precisely land them at a particular location. It's really difficult, but when it's on the ground, it acts just like a putt. Ooh, not as fast as I thought. Good contact though. So we're coming up on a putt for par. It's a little bit riskier than the last one, but like I said, anything can happen. You're never out of the golf. You're never out of the hole, never. So let's take a look. About 20 feet. Survey the scene. If you hit it hard enough, it just goes straight. Don't worry about gravity. I'm trying to find the high point of the break and use that to my advantage. Good old Paul Azinger technique. Worked very well for me in visualizing the break. So it's going left. It's going left, but not as much as I think. Oh, that would have been awesome. I love the visualization technique. Find the high point and then um, just hit it. Keep the club face at the hole. Okay, not a bad bogey. Got out of there. Bunkers, man, bunkers. Newman. So, let's move on to the next hole. It's a lovely par three. 100 and, no wait, maybe it's like 185, 190, 200 from back here. They move it around. We'll see what it's like today. I think it might be 204 today. They knew we were coming. They just knew we were coming. Got about a buck 85 to the front here. Flag's on the front. Playing about 193, I'm guessing. Got a six iron. Hit it crispy, get it up there. It's a pretty big green. Um, make my practice swing. Let's get it up there. Nothing too special. Oh, that felt good. Get in the hole. It's right over it. Oh! Woo! We got a birdie putt. Make up for the last hole. Oh, Dorothy, we're not in Kansas anymore. We might want to get the heck out of here. Uh, we're going to do a three-hole vlog today, and then we're going to walk straight back home because I can see a tornado out there, and it's on our way. Better not suck the ball up before we make birdie. Um, that's right, the old man says there's a storm coming, Harry. And we best be ready. Exactly. We are gonna get the heck out of Dodge. But not before we make a birdie. You see that ball up there? Yes, see that? That, oh, there it is. Oh crap, I can't hold it still. I can't contain myself, we got a thunderstorm. We're walking as fast as we can, Kansas. Dorothy came by with Toto and said, Oh my goodness, we've got to leave the situation. And I said, okay, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was that, old man? N-E-M. N-E-M. <laughs> yeah, so we are going to make this putt and get out of here. Let's do it. Do you guys have faith in me? Do you have any faith? I think we've got to get out of here. That might be the siren, actually. We are gonna to have to get out of here. All right, so quick little birdie. 
make the putt, get out of this open field with a lightning strike, and move. Here we are. Putter! I'll give it my best. We are getting close to the strike. It's coming. We must get out of here. Come on. Still, the superintendent must care for them. All right, what do we got? We got a lot of thunder. There's a little ball mark in front of my thing. We're going in. A little bit to the left. Come on, baby. Make the putt electrifying, not the club. Here we go. Right at it. Oh, are you kidding me? There's a thunderstorm. Let's get out of here. All right, let's go. <laughs> Great, Scott. We almost made birdie, but we're getting out of here. We must get out. The sky is looking kind of dark. We're going to get out of here by walking across the stream and going up the road. Oh, I feel the wind. We got to get out of here. I don't advise, by the way, ever playing in a thunderstorm. This thing crept up on us and we have a nice escape route. Always have an escape route. We have an escape route. Come on, old man. You can do it. We don't get on the ship until the last man is on the boat. So I was working in Florida and Florida's like the top lightning strike capital in the world. Thunderstorm came in, but it was, it was nowhere, like nowhere around. It was out at the range of PGA National, setting up a drive chip and putt. And I told one of the guys to go out there, set up one of the flags for the driving range for the driver challenge. Nothing in the sky, like perfectly clear. Out of nowhere, a lightning bolt hits the top of the flag just in front of the one he was gonna go put down. Like, he was five yards from a lightning strike. The bolt came straight down. The sky was clear, perfectly clear. So, I never take chances with thunderstorms. And you shouldn't either. Because even when the sky is clear, you can still get struck by lightning. All it's gotta do is travel sideways and go down. And that's why we're getting out of here, because I don't want to take that chance. There will be another day to do another vlog. And today is just a taste of what you'll get coming up, I guess. But thank you for tuning in today to Good Ugg Offers. This is a fun vlog, I enjoyed it. I never realized vlogging could be so much fun on a course. But uh, yeah, we're gonna be kicking off some new vlogs coming up soon after the hurricane rolls through. And then um, kick it into overdrive. Let's have some fun. Thanks again for tuning in. Enjoy your evening. And if you're looking for a simplified way to play your best golf right now, make some birdies, check out Segudo.golf. Simplified golf swing learning program. You know the drill. I'll see you in a future episode.